I, I messed myself up with sweets. Like this was probably less than a week ago. Is like I don't know if you guys at the grocery store are the same way, but I'll, I'll do my best to avoid the aisles I know are problems for me. So like the snack, the salty aisle where the pork rinds are, where the pretzels are, where the chips are. If I walk down that aisle, even on the way from like the meats mm -hmm. to the checkout, I'm going to slip up. I'm going to see something that's like, oh, two pounds of colossal cashews. Yes, please. And pork rinds and this and that. And Man of so I, I walked past like I had my normal <laughs> stuff. I got, I got my eggs, got my my yogurts and whatnot. And I was walking back through and I intentionally like didn't go down the salty aisle because mm -hmm. I'm like, I know I don't have the. I don't have the defense mechanisms up right now to resist. There's nothing that. there for you, though. So That's I went, the main thing. I love the salty aisle. I just, I love There's it. There's nothing there for you. I want it. Are though. you trying to hypnotize him right now, Kyle? There's clearly a it's whole like aisle. A, of it's like an alley full of. Yeah, crack. there's an alley full of crack. I'm sure, like 15 miles from me. That's the place for me. Woody, do I do? I've never tried. Crack, I love I pork bet. rinds and cashews <laughs> and. Chips. I avoid that alley. I like Andy Cap's hot fries. I like everything in that aisle except for Doritos. I don't like Doritos very much. I think those are low quality, but. So I went to the right one aisle to go towards the checkout and the right aisle to it is like hmm. some sodas and sweets and stuff. For some reason, I picked up feminine hygiene products. Yeah, so, <laughs> I'm incredibly <laughs> impressionable. I have a heavy flow. So I to, and so I was walking down the sweet aisle and because I don't venture down the sweet aisle that often, brand new sugar technologies were bombarding oh, me from every Reese's side. Reese's has been working like the cranberry people did Reese's, in the 90s. Yeah, they don't Oreo tell you Reese, the Reese's company picked up the last remaining scientists and they've been coming <laughs> up with the most fantastic ways to mix chocolate and peanut butter for the past 80 years. That's and great. I walked down and I passed the Oreos and usually I can blow past that because I because mm -hmm. like I want to get the pork rinds and the salt. But I saw birthday cake Oreos, uh -huh. which must be a new technology that I'm not familiar with. And what really got me is I saw that delicious white cream in between the, the two cookies and the sprinkles it had on there, like the yep. flavored sugary sprinkles. And so before I know it, some demons taken me and now, I'm, <laughs> now I've got a box of those in my cart and I get home and just absent-mindedly ate the entire thing of Oreos. Like nice. the next morning, like it was so absent-minded that it's Good somewhere on golly. here. Yeah, yeah it let's was- Let's talk Oreos for a minute because I'm a big is fan. It? Yeah, um, it, I was, it, was, it was so like, second nature just to keep munching because i was high and so just like oh i want something that tastes delicious like i woke mm. up the next morning and was just like oh i think i'm getting sick <laughs> and like it took like 10 minutes before it was like no this is just how you feel if you eat a week and a half worth of sugar in one night we talk about these oreos i'm looking yes. at this and i'm like ooh, pick one amazing amazing oh my god chocolate or mint can cherry cola oreos sign me up oreo thins hold on who the thought things were a good idea? This is a bad idea. This ooh. is ooh, yeah, double stuff. Okay, triple double. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> Don't forget. No, no, no. Most stuff, top left corner. That stuff is all right. It's gross. <laughs> if you've never seen a most stuff, they're actually like repulsive because it's, it's be mostly much, uh... the stuff. <laughs> but Evidently. Oreo things. Oh my god! Somebody was just like. I, there was a dick in their mouth when they came up with that idea. Oh, that guy should have been fired on the spot. <laughs> right? They'll be like, what do you think we're doing here? <laughs> <laughs> do you think the mystery Oreo is like each cookie is a mystery or like we just don't know what's in this? Oh, my goodness. I got to wow. be honest. The second one is my preferred, like like the standard Oreo. Mm. So, so it's going thin, standard, double, and then some combination of the nonsense, probably triple and mega or, or no, no, mega and most. Most is repulsive. I had I, I had a double stuffed Oreo not too long ago, and I remember I, I cracked it open and I like tried to like bite the the cream out with my teeth. You know, I did that childish, mm -hmm. and I, and I immediately was like, "This is nasty. I don't like <laughs> it. There's way too much of this in my mouth." This like, is amazing. Like, Dude, I, like I think I would stuff. like the most if I don't have milk. If I do have milk, I'd slide to the left somewhere, and I, and as much as I ripped on thins with milk, maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah, they're all yeah, no. good, but the you're right. It is a bit childish to go past double as an adult. That's doubles too much for me. I I I would prefer standard to double. Now this I, whole like, image we're looking at here, I haven't tried ninety percent. I've only maybe international tried two of these. A red lot of these velvet, are international. A red velvet Oreo that sounds very good. I would 
I would eat that. I'd try that. Well, Banana I, split Oreo. That sounds vile. Apple pie. No, thank you. Hot and spicy cinnamon. No, not a chance. Terrible. Pumpkin spice. No. Mint. No. Pina colada is the worst. Mystery. I'm not, a, I'm not a gambler. Uh, carrot cake. No. Peeps. No. I'm not a gambler. Pina You're colada. Oreos. Pina colada is disgusting. Kettle corn. No. Most of these I would say no to. Cherry cola. Probably gross. Maple cream. I'll give that a try. Snickerdoodle. You know, maybe I've come around on that. Snickerdoodles are pretty good. Dunkin' Donuts branded mocha Oreo looks terrible. Cannabis, Cannabis and, codeine. and codeine Oreo. I would try that. Actually, no, that would taste really bad. That's little Wayne's Oreos. Yeah, weed Those tastes are... terrible. That... Weed is so strong, it can ruin dark chocolate. I know we talked about yeah. it briefly <laughs> last time. Have you found any episodes of reality TV that are maybe pushing you towards ghosts yet? I see you've done a couple more Ghost Hunters ones. I did one of the newer episodes of Ghost Adventures, and it was the one that I was drawn to because I don't know if you've seen the clip, but it's of uh, one of the one of Zach's goons that are uh, they're like in this haunted saloon. And he's like, I don't know about you guys. I'm getting like a four. I want to drink that fucking whiskey right now. Yeah. And then he just <laughs> takes like three shots whis- whiskey. And he's like, I'm I feel really good. And it's like, yeah. I, it's three shots of whiskey. Of course you feel good. And- <laughs> Dude, I, I saw that exact clip mm-hmm. where the guy, I thought it was like a skit, like a silly skit, which it kind it of is. is. Yeah. It is a the silly whole show. Skit. Have you, have you seen this <laughs> clip, Kyle? This, this ghost hunter walks past this table that has whiskey on it and is like, guys, I have such a strong urge to take a shot of that whiskey. And they're like, out of nowhere? And he's like, yes, all I had to do was walk by this bottle of whiskey and I want a shot. And then he like proceeded to give in to the demonic uh, booze demon and indulged him with three shots. And the other guy, if I recall, was like acting just befuddled like you would never do shots out of a whiskey bottle unless there were a Western gunslinging devil man. Yeah, yeah making Zach is you. pissed at him the rest of the time. He's like, dude, you are wasted. You got to get out of my face. Like, you're ruining this invest, the integrity of this investigation. <laughs> and I'm like, of the Ghost Adventures investigation. We don't drink on the job. Fuck you. This is all made up. <laughs> that was for all of us. I had and to we drank fire most Mark. Of it. <laughs> Mark was busting ghost drunk on the job. I had to fire him. I couldn't. I mean, yeah. We get sued by a ghost. What are you going to do? They, they, they had had to let them out. Not out. only, I, I think that that is no offense to anyone. But I hate those ghost programs. The idea of watching it, Ugh. like, look, look, I spend my time in silly ways. I watch silly things, learn lore about made up things. But my God, they have been looking for ghosts since like 1997, <laughs> and they haven't found one yet with their EM meters and their wackadoo. And look at when this line moves, ghosts are here. Okay, buddy, that's a vibrator. Like, it's nonsense. <laughs> Every, I've They're seen the, the behind the scenes stuff, and I've heard people like tell on them, be like, yeah. They'll just like throw a pebble into the corner of the room, and everybody will go, oh, "Who's that? Who's that?" They'll like have, they have PAs like, made off up technology just, at like, this point. Yeah, yes. what, what are they some of the made up technologies, Chris? They have this know. one camera that where they're like they they pick up anomalies, and it's like stick figures moving in the background. I'm like, where did you? What is this camera reading? It's like they're like, mm-hmm. if you can see, there's a guy in the back and another guy in the back, and they have to be anomalies of the spiritual realm, and they're just made up. Like I don't know what this technology is yeah they never get into it it's never like a good answer like well it's sending out a pulse sort of like a bat and it's Mm. interfering with the 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 dark matter that makes up a demon and then bouncing back to like it's always like what are you talking about yeah there's an x on the demon screen of course there's a demon yep that's it that's it that's exactly it yep what am i looking at those you're an anomaly. anomaly It's an anomaly. Yeah. That demon's got <laughs> legs for days. This is the anomaly. This is the anomaly cost constellation, Woody. Now, when this is above Jupiter, you'll have good luck. If and- the, if we had a constellation like this and it was called like the night or something, it would be the most accurate constellation of all time. <laughs> because well, basically, they basically have a Kinect stuff. camera. That's <laughs> is it really what they're using? They're using oh, the Kinect. I, I wouldn't be surprised. So these uh, people like is there how often in these shows because i don't watch the the ghost hunting stuff how often is, do they allow someone on the show to offer pushback or is that like well dude, there's come one on, that i heard of it was i think they had a priest on it was like a, a live thing they did and i'm pretty sure they had a priest on and he was not going along with the program mm-hmm. and he was like yeah that, it's probably i mean there it could be but it's probably not a demon and zach was getting pissed and they ended up he's like he's like i'm getting 
this negative evil energy from the spirit. We have to cut this short. And then they just cut the program. <laughs> this guy was just not playing along. He's like, what the fuck, dude? This is, come on. I think, I think the spirits were starting to influence the priest. They were making yeah. him say all sorts of lies. No all sorts of crazy about. things. <laughs> they start trying we to found a new, him. we found a much more holy priest. <laughs> Father, make it up. Off <laughs> backstage.com. Yeah, off of Fiverr. <laughs> I, am here Fiverr. To, I am here to remove that demon <laughs> problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is the <laughs> finest priest you can get for $6 quickly. <laughs> Fiverr Africans. <laughs> the fiber Indian guy. That would be good. Yeah, I, I could never get sucked into the demon ghost shows. And part like, even if I bought in fully that you were able to track demons with like a, a camera or something, why would a demon suddenly reveal itself to a couple of fucking retards? Like they're, out of yeah, nowhere. They're... If, See, you, that's if you're the part a demon, I can buy into. no, if you're a demon and you're going around, the, what you want as a demon is for nobody to believe in you. You do not want people Why? believing you're real. You want to be because the Why? it's like the goal of like, like Satan and d demons, like at least in like a lot of theology is like their goal is to corrupt you, to make you think that your own selfish desires are what you want they don't want drink you whiskey. going i'm gonna i'm gonna drink these whiskey shots because <laughs> the devil's telling me to they want you to be like yeah i'm gonna be slothful i'm gonna do what i want i'm gonna be gluttonous i'm gonna do what i, I don't want to have a good time. convenient like it, the way the demons operate is they have as little proof of their existence as possible but they're real dude if, if you're trying to get someone to, to fuck themselves up you don't want a big scary demon in the corner of the room being like don't work out and overeat like then you're gonna be like oh Oh, hitting the elliptical, <laughs> but if, but if you are convinced in your own Fuck pride you. that you know what's on. best for yourself, then you're gonna fall into it. You gotta, like a demon wouldn't let itself be seen on on TLC. I still can't get past the convenience of this whole thing. How demons want to exist in a way that you don't really prove they. Well, exist. let me help. Well, I, I, well, I don't think the, the demons the have to hand, exist. A in, ghost. In your on the other hand, a ghost might want to be found because there it seems like based on the liars on TV that they're usually conflicted spirits. Like they can't move on. Because either that. they don't understand what's happened or they mm -hmm. refuse. It's like, no, you killed her. I'm so, ah! like, like he's just there stuck in this rageful moment, the spirit like stuck in this little place. And I could almost believe in that, you know, in some way. Almost. Not really, though. Well, I yeah. but see that guy, to be seen. that spirit might want to be seen. It might, it might it wants attention. It wants to be heard because they'd hear it in life or something like that. But a demon not is expecting this, like, those cameras. sneaky yeah, thing that's mm, doing their due diligence. Like, what 20... the fuck is that? How the fuck did they get that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've been spotted. Demons know about cameras. <laughs> Trust me. They know yeah. all about cameras. You know, it's My funny. It's like, I want to you about demons. I, I could not be more on. Like, <laughs> I had a teacher I'm... in high school who said he taught me this lesson. It's burned into my head deep. If anyone, anyone ever says, trust me, don't. <laughs> I was like, fuck. <laughs> that's solid <laughs> advice right there. If that's someone says, the, trust me, some don't. Shit. He was listening to like a like a single fifty two year old teacher had her heart broken a bunch yeah. of times. She's just trying to like pass it down to you, Woody. No matter what a man tells you, don't trust no, him. No, this guy was a okay. badass Vietnam vet. Uh, taught poetry. Like he was really cool. Nah, he's built like you, Taylor. Oh, okay. Seems like a pretty cool guy. Vietnam yeah, vet. Guy. Guy. <laughs> By the way, Vietnam <laughs> vet. Thank you. Viet Vietnam vet poetry might be my new favorite genre of poetry, by the way. I'm just imagining <laughs> that dark shit that remember when Elaine hired the Vietnam vet or whatever, and he was yeah. he was like writing copy for for women's clothing, but from the perspective of a, a PTSD ridden yeah. Gulf War veteran. Go to sleep and stay dry with your <laughs> Warburton high quality sleeper camper net. We might all be Keep dead out. by the morning. Yeah, we but might we'll all be dry. Be <laughs> I've heard over a good rock track. It's just Creed. Um, <laughs> like not exactly uh, that, but I keep getting these uh, YouTube shorts from teachers, mm -hmm. and they're talking about. I guess the pandemic really threw a wrench into an already cluttered machine of education, and so they they're like, my kids can't read, my kids can't spell, my kids my kids don't know what conjugation is, my kids don't know, and 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 it's it's one it's a montage by the way, like mm -hmm. like you're. And it's every grade. I got <laughs> high schoolers that can't even sit in a sit up, sit in a chair for twenty minutes. Like like they can't. They're they're illiterate. They're fucking illiterate. Um, they couldn't. None of them. I mean, there's the funny one where uh, they they don't know how to read a clock. I guess a lot of people like Gen Z doesn't know how to read a clock. 
anymore mm. because I heard that. I have a hard time believing it. But I have a hard time believing it too. But these teachers tell me they can't fucking spell, and they're like sixteen, like can't fucking. Well, that I, and I, you know what that that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, like like words like I mean, I you can still really. thrive in life. Or, I bet. <laughs> like they can't spell their. I bet. I know. <laughs> they can't spell their five and six letter words yet, and they're like driving age, and it's it's like this isn't gonna cut it. In the I, I don't know. I think I think every generation says that, but at some point, there's truth to like when kids can't read and write and tell tell you what time it is with a fucking clock. Um, I guess I could understand. I remember lots of it of, um standardized testing involving the hands of clocks. Mm -hmm. I remember that like there's a whole section with like the hands of a clock and like how how long will it be until lunchtime Tuesday? It's Monday. Oh shit. Well, let's figure this out. Like mm. that's a hard thing when you're in like second grade. I don't think that a high schooler could do that now if they don't have a real fucking clock. Because they don't know what the hands mm -hmm. do. That's like, okay, the big good. hands gotta be the hours. That's I pretty embarrassing. Suspect it very <laughs> Can kids read a clock? Well, I don't know. Tell me the housing prices of the school that you're going to, and I'll let you know if they can read a clock. If the if the median uh, home mm. price is half a million dollars, those kids can read a clock just fine. Do people well, are right? All those teachers who are like, if well, you know, you're not going to be able to know how to spell if you just use spell check for everything. You're not going to be, and it's like they were kind of right about that. Like, yeah. the more like there's no reason for kids to know how to read an analog clock now, and so they can't. And if they, like think of like how if chat GPT gets huge the same way, like spelling and reading a, a clock face is by the wayside. If people are using chat GPT and AI for like all critical thinking, that will fade. I Just think basically us the plot having, to Wally. Having gone there. through yeah. school without <laughs> having us having gone through and a lot of people having gone through school without smartphones has to be a huge advantage. Like for we had sure. to actually do things. Like, there was no cheat button. This seems like a cheat button if I'm in school. Like if mm -hmm. I'm back to like testing day and it's like oh my god if i just knew if i just knew the answer to this question then i know the answer to the next four questions but i can't remember that one little thing i can't remember the character's name and it's just like fucking oedipus's brother what is it? of course it's fucking all right now i went from making like a 72 to like an 84 like it's a whole mm -hmm. huge difference and but i'm just imagining all the ways you could use technology now to just come straight up cheat the ability to you're like James James Bond, ha just having the camera and being able to like take pictures of like anything that's on the teacher's desk. If I could get into the teacher's room and I could, and like have access to her desk with a camera phone, I would have every test. I used to do that anyway. Like I would. There was yeah. plenty of times when like you could go in there and be at her desk or do things if you were the kid who was friendly with her. Oh, do you need something from your desk, Miss Walker? I'm over there rifling through shit. But if I had had a camera phone to document and like. I don't know. I don't think I had to cheat. Me. Oh, I, I had to do analog style cheating. The way I cheated was like filling out index cards and then like wearing a coat on on like a day in May, <laughs> like just putting, <laughs> putting, just like having a Billy Wee coat and then just having like the zipper down a little bit. And I got a note card in there that shows me how to conjugate the Italian <laughs> verbs. And I'm here's just my like, move. Oh, I was in the I was in so, my zone. My move is to put the notes on the desk. They're on the desk. Doesn't They're work very in college. Small. Though, you're bouncing around so much. Well, uh, the the you know, the test that I'm going to take is in oh. you know I'm in science class. I'm writing science notes on the desk. I've got the book and I'm just putting oh. them all. They're so on like the wooden all, desk. The week written up to it. You're just writing that. notes on the desk. Well, maybe just the day of the test. I'm just oh, like, okay. all right. I know this is about like the makeup of a cell or or fucking mitochondria or whatever. Like I put my fucking like. Summarize this shit. Write it on my desk. Cover it with my test. They're not looking for. They're not peeling it up and looking at the script. There's scribble all over our desk. There's fucking mm. pentagrams and shit. That 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 was flat. That S that never failed. Yeah, the one with the angles. The S. Yeah, the, the fucking like, silly S. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. I would do that sometimes. Like I would use a pencil. You know, and write a. like uh, like singular, possessive, or whatever, and like write all the like the conjugations for whatever Italian words it was. And then it'd like go to turn in my test every single time because like the last thing I do is I smudge all of the cheating I did. So just a palm full of graphite handing <laughs> in my test every single time. Still, I've I've also done this. Um, this one is ingenious if you ask me. Yeah, I um I think this was for spelling. Uh, I would write the words 
very clearly and legibly, but small, on the marker board, up in the corner or something. And no one would not, now I, now I have notes that no one can blame on me. I have like, whoops, you, looks like someone forgot to erase the corner of the marker board. There's that hard word. Wait, you could, what, what was your teacher doing that you could just go write all the words for spelling up there? Not all the words, but maybe the one I was having a problem with. Like, like oh. I would def I would put, I would put notes up there, like cheats up there, behind her. And the board had to huge, cheat right? spelling. Oh, of course, she didn't <laughs> spelling, pay spelling, course just she didn't. easy peasy, baby. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I loved spelling. Spelling tests were my jam, especially as a kid, like, like grade school, because I was always like, oh, here comes the, the time where I feel like a fucking genius because all these dumbasses don't know some words have a ph for an f sound. I I remember when I was in fifth grade they're like what's your worst subject and i wrote down spilling because <laughs> it was like the funniest thing come high high school it's not funny anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what and what's your favorite launch <laughs> <laughs> and i like gaim yeah! <laughs> <laughs> pretty good oh, oh all right <laughs> uh. <laughs> France? South Southern. yeah we were a vaseline family not a Windows oh, yeah. family. What would you use my the Vaseline was, yeah. for? My, my mom used it for taking makeup off. And hmm. so we just had a giant tub of it in the bathroom. And then I, of course, would use it for science. Yeah. Lighting Q-tips on fire. Oh, I thought that, you were, that's about it. <laughs> I thought <laughs> no, you meant jacking it. off. <laughs> uh -oh, <laughs> masturbate with Vaseline? Oh, my you can God. Try. What a, what a Dude, slow... When you're... When you're Green 12, you're just when you're, when you're 12, you're just, 12 just, you're just trying stuff, man. You built a muscle jerk in with Vaseline. Like... That's too viscous. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's nothing too or not viscous enough when you're 12 and you're experimenting with new things to jack off with. Uh, yeah, don't you think about that a lot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you go take some of your mom's nice expensive lotion, jack off with that, and then, <laughs> and then the rest of the day, <laughs> you're just walking jar. around. You're the just size of a bottle cap, and it costs $130. Yeah. Then off. you're walking around with your like hands and dick smelling like like lilac <laughs> for the rest oh, of the day. You, What's you, that smell? This smells like my lotion. Oh no, this Shut is up, terrible. Mom. My you dick think looks that's 10 bad. years younger, and I'm 12. Wait, I can't get yeah. my makeup off. There's no Vaseline. I thought yeah. I grabbed lotion, but I grabbed that fucking suntan Nair. lotion with the bronzer and now my hand and my cock are as black as cold. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't wash off yeah, in three days. Looks like an, an Emmy, or whatever the gold one is. I'll never it's go back. Shining. <laughs> yeah, what did you jack off with as a kid, mm. everyone? That's dry. Um, that wasn't on lotion. the topic list. When, but you weren't, when you guys weren't going dry, what were you doing? You need it. N never dry because that's weird. Um, lotion, um, some sort of, but not uh, like any sort of fragranced lotion because that'll burn. That thin, watery lady shit. You need a good like Vaseline intensive care lotion that's so it so it doesn't like dissipate on you mid jerk. I don't want to be going back for more. You know what I mean? That's fair. That's fair. You need something with sticking power, staying power. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be enjoying yourself and then ah. Oh. Oh my goodness! Now I got to get up and fucking um, crab walk to the bathroom. <laughs> but if, if anybody out there wants a wants a if you can't afford wet platinum, which is the finest of of silicone masturbatory and sexual lubricants, um, coconut oil is like cheap, healthy, good for you. I don't think it messes up most vaginas. Uh, it's it's a good lubricant yeah. that you can you can and it like stays at room temperature. It's solid. So you kind of reach in the jar and scrape some off the top and like oh I don't like that. that's, that's the part I like about coconut oil the least. Oh, yeah. I like it. It reminds me of that soap from high school that was a powder that you had to get going first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't like the extra layer of, of work. Yeah, I don't that, that have powdered melt. stuff around the oh. shop sink. I don't want to have to melt the lube <laughs> down, but I guess twelve year old I, me I wasn't worried about like what it would do to a vagina. I, I that wasn't that was <laughs> at the bottom of my priority list. Oh, and also, yeah. I didn't have access to wet platinum uh, as a twelve-year-old boy. Yeah, so you were you were using just my mom wasn't using that to wipe her makeup off, so I didn't have any in the house. Yeah, you were just using tons of Vaseline. Every time your mom opened the Vaseline can, there were like four fingers 
Yeah, just, just, one one just, just, mark just, on the one, just one, one small quarter-sized hole right down <laughs> yeah. the middle. Oh, quarter, you're being generous with the quarter. Yeah, there's, there's like four big finger scoops and then just a pube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a son that double dips. He's got endurance. He's got. He's, he must have been going for a while, and then he came Correct back. Correct the case. More. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy Drew in the case of the Vaseline pube. <laughs> what's being found boxcar children mystery uh, yeah i would i would use i would either dry it which was never as good or whatever lotion was about and i remember there just kind of being lotion around in every bathroom mm -hmm. most bathrooms yeah. like as a kid and so it yeah, really wasn't my family yeah it wasn't a huge deal to find it i remember when i was like 11 i was jacking off in the shower and at that time of my life shampoo that was the only thing <laughs> slick enough in the shower to be jacking off with and so i, I all i had I, I was probably i was using probably 10 and one yeah you I grabbed remember, the Rogaine instead though and just, oh. <laughs> just, just grew a thicket all over my shaft yeah i uh i remember like having a good go of it from probably like most of 11 my 11th year and thinking in my head like i got this down pat take a shower crank one off with the shampoo and then somehow it got like really frothed up and on maybe the downstroke i got a good deal of shampoo uh -oh. in my penis hole and mm -hmm. it was the first time that it ever happened and i was like ah, ah, and like had a little mini freak out realized what it was and, and have nev never went back Never went back. I'm on a 20 year streak, I guess now of not <laughs> jacking off with shampoo because I got scarred by by like because I remember it pee it hurt it burned to like pee the next pee after that, and I was like, oh fuck, hopefully this goes away, and it did like the next pee. So don't I, do that. Don't never jack off in the shower ever. ever. I used to what? take the longest fucking showers. They were, I didn't get out until we ran out of hot water, and I could I my whole family. I'm convinced was convinced that I was jacking off in there, but I wasn't. Oh, for sure. They'd be outside the door like, what's he doing in there? As if that, but it, I think I'm not jacking off. I'm just depressed. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of sit down showers. Yeah. yeah. Maybe if oh, I yeah. hit puberty, I wouldn't be so depressed, but here I am. <laughs> <laughs> With no leg hair. Maybe I like fucking calm. Sad. No leg hair. <laughs> Damn. Were you crying in the shower? <laughs> no, just sad. It was warm and no one bothered me. Damn. Man. Yeah, when I was doing that, I was jacking off. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was thinking of like, like all right, post post hockey practice, post whatever's going on. Big <laughs> did you big have a shower? Did you have a bedroom to yourself or do you share? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I had yeah, I had the um fourth floor to my house. Like it was oh. all mine. I I don't know. I guess sweet. I was just like imagining you said like going to the shower to find a like, safe place feels like one of those eight brothers and sisters kind of uh, like no. solutions mm -hmm. i had like my own living room and couch and stuff uh across the like no one else used that floor of the house sounds excellent oh <laughs> wow that that's fancy i didn't feel, feel it, I, maybe i'm describing it as a little more fancy than it really was like it, it, it wasn't a new home or anything but it was a lot of space and privacy what about you chris did you have siblings you had to hide your jack off uh behavior from no we did it together all right, for no. the first one done, gets the controller for. <laughs> I don't even I want want again. I win again. <laughs> I win again. <laughs> no, it was. You're also three years younger than me, and you can't do it. But um, no, I had, I had like the whole basement. Like we had like a sort of finished basement, so I had the whole basement to myself. I had kind of like the same thing with like a couch and a TV and shit, and mm -hmm. so I had, I had the run of the basement, and no bathroom down there though. So. uh you didn't need I it. Didn't. You had the whole basement. The Shit, world was yours. Anywhere I wanted. Yeah. Laundry mm. room, tool room, anywhere I wanted. Um, but yeah, so I didn't really have any issues sharing. That's but, good. Did so. Did you guys, like, you, you know the old uh, 4chan post of the, the cum shoebox? Oh. Where the guy just came in the sh same shoebox for like six years and it started. Yeah. It was like that Simpsons episode, Lisa's Tooth, where a little society developed. They started advancing <laughs> in technology. I never actually knew anyone in real life that had a story like that. I never knew it, or at least not any anyone that told me. And I know I never like kept, like, I never had a place where I like came on. You know what I mean? Did you guys There's usually other warning signs to a person before no, I would, you get to that? I would come in a towel and then wash it. 
Yeah, I'd, I'd, I wanted to destroy the evidence right away. I just, mm-hmm. you know, get in the laundry right away, you know, but I would come in a towel or something. I would, right I would away. Get, You're so hoity toity. I had a hand towel. I don't want to lay it around get, getting smelly. Get too crusty, and I'd be like, this is actually starting to hurt. I need to swap this thing out with a fresh one. <laughs> and then you're like, like, you throw it in the hamper, and in your like child God, mind, damn. it's like, now no one who picks up that towel will have any <laughs> idea that it's not just a towel I used to dry the shampoo off myself. It's like a solid, <laughs> hard shape of a yeah. towel. It's like, it's like starched up. Drop it and it shatters. <laughs> yeah. You drop it and it, it's the shape of my dick like yeah. a ghost. <laughs> and there's one really stained. Did someone do a, a wash with bleach? <laughs> there's a weird discoloration mm. on this on, on Woody, the towel that says Woody on the tag. <laughs> It's like when you throw shoes in the washer and you could hear it bouncing around inside. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever like you you were having to hide from your sister and your parents, Kyle? But you were just coming right in the towel and then right in or in in toilet paper, something like in that, something for, for immediate. Toilet paper doesn't. I don't. I, I I I just don't see how toilet paper gets the job done. Or tissue? When I ever, like, would you come in a tissue? How many tissues do, is it going to take to let, let them out that your parents notice? I, I, I promise you, if I use if I use tissues to deal with my ejaculate, then then I would run out of tissues long before I ran out of ejaculate. Okay, like I come a lot. I take lock and load. Okay, you do. It's the premium mm-hmm. premium come in hand <laughs> formula, and I, I, it would take so many puffs that that, that I couldn't afford. It. I couldn't afford. Yeah. It, frankly, I I, I it run me out of household. Um, it, it just. Oh, if I got so sick, that, like if I got sick and my mom was like, and I was home from school, I'm like 12 years old or whatever, and she brought me like a box of puffs or Kleenex or whatever to blow my nose, I'd had like maybe blow my nose once, get through, <laughs> get through the whole box of puffs in my three day, uh, my three day sick three period. Days? Yeah, if I was sick for three days, it was, and she was out running errands. You're 12. It's like I'm going to I'm jacking Aren't off. Like I know that room fucking reeks. <laughs> well, you don't but you don't get it's not a movie. It's not like you can clean up your load with one tissue. Kyle's correct about that. I think he's a little hoity toity with it. But <laughs> I, you know, you need a lot of tissues to get everything totally cleaned up. And then sometimes you ball all those cummy tissues together. You need a couple other barrier tissues around the ball of tissues so that it's not so obvious what you've done. I don't get cum on my oh. hand. You don't want to get cum on your hand. And then at your, what, and then what do you do 23 minutes later when you're feverishly horny again <laughs> because you're 12 <laughs> years old? You go, Just, well, I bet I can finalize another one of these before mom gets back like from paper Panera. mache. You keep making layers onto the same ball of tissues. <laughs> yeah, you just keep doing that. You paper mache it. Make a little it just sounds like it. a Mail Monday episode. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we figured took a 13 year break off of it and now we're storming back into Mail Monday jack off discussions. <laughs> <laughs> so it's many of the laundry room off related back in the day. Your Mail Mondays, Woody. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I yeah. used to, so I would get a ton of um, YouTube used to have like email for the functionality built into it. We mm-hmm. could write letters to people, and I mostly got it from there. And I, I I don't know, like I try to help someone, but I'd also grab some like title bait, you know, mm-hmm. and, and grab that one. And yeah, the sex stuff. There'd usually be a one almost every episode. I took a lot of heat for it too. Really? But yeah, a lot of people felt like my topics were too risque for my audience. And like a part of me, like I see their point. Part of me is like, I don't no, like someone has to talk to people about this stuff. And I was trying to give good, honest adult advice. That's funny. I never thought of those as like offensive. Like, oh, what there were some. About? Like, I, I remember one, uh, a guy was like, hey, he was get, he was like an older teenager, call him like 16. And he said he took too long to finish during a BJ. Or no, he asked how he could take longer to finish during a BJ. And I'm like, your target is wrong. Your goal is all backwards. You and her are in a cooperative effort to get to the finish. You're not trying to hold out. This is an endurance. Is it like in sex? Maybe you can finish too quickly. In a BJ, if you're done in like two and a half minutes, she's not mad at that. It's okay. Mm -hmm. She feels good. She's like, yeah. damn, I sucked the soul out of that guy. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, like, I just educate, I guess, old teenagers about, you know, BJs are not meant to be slow. Like, then I mean, they get back work do. back to work on little St. James Island. <laughs> <laughs> With their newfound knowledge of how to please men. 
There was one. When yeah, was uh, Woody. What if I, the guy I'm trying to please is a fucking fake scientist quadriplegic, <laughs> <laughs> and he's in a mech suit that keeps his. He likes on. me to flirt with him in binary, dude. Like, like three one, times in Mail Monday, one, I yeah, did one, it one, with uh, yeah. FPS Russia as like my partner. We and I try to pick ones that were obviously jokes and scams. Yeah. One guy wrote me like ten years later and said that. It really upset him that I didn't take his serious problem seriously. Which one? And I don't know. I don't remember. Shit. But I, I'm like, no fucking way that was a real letter. Like, I'm still not sure if I made a mistake in choosing that one and making it a joke. Mm -hmm. Or if he was, like, trying to troll me yeah. whatever, four years ago. Or something. I remember that so well. Like, like uh, I can vividly remember sitting next to you with your, your bunk bed up above the thing and and and. uh um, us going through those things and recording that mail Monday. I remember that room so well. It's so weird to like be in that room after you've seen it for years on, you know, the screen or whatever. That's always weird. Uh, I remember when I, when I went to Wings's room because I've been in there before too. It's like, oh, you've been there too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's weird to go in there and like, like, like you've only seen it through this little portal. And then now you're in the three dimensional space. It's, it's bizarre. I can look anywhere. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Every once in a while, I'll like, I know we were talking about maps as decoration, and I just like did one of these guys and showed mm -hmm. that. I like that. Yeah. And uh, like, I imagine if I'm a viewer, it's like, what? Whoa, I never get to see over there. Like, that's a secret part. Mm -hmm. So I don't let anyone see the pile of boxes and junk off. Like, this is a very selective view. Show if us. you look over, there's junk over there's like boxes and trash over there from mm -hmm. my move. And like, that's pretty much both sides. And I'm like, you just see this box. That's about it. You will not see anything just, else. Just the VHS collection, the guitar. Yeah, that 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 pile of junk. Yeah, you can see that pile of junk. Have you ever seen the movie Zero Dark Thirty? It's it's about when they got mm -hmm. Osama bin Laden. I have heard I'm of not it. Not sure. I highly recommend it. It's it's, it, it's 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 a fairly accurate telling true story shit of how they got Osama bin Laden. And uh, it was a woman at the CIA who was mad about some of her friends getting blown up, who made it her job. To to like track down and find Osama bin Laden. It, it's it's her. It was her. It was her the whole way. And so it hmm. tells her story for a while. But then you've also got I think Chris Chris Pratt is on the SEAL mm -hmm. team, like SEAL Team Six. Mm -hmm. And then there's a there's several other characters like scattered along like uh, <clears throat> in the military and the CIA and everybody who like made this thing happen. And when they actually go on the raid and go in, it is really fucking cool. Uh, I just listened to a podcast though. The, it was the guy who killed Osama bin Laden. Like he's the podcast uh, guest, and he's telling the story of killing Osama bin Laden, and it was fascinating. And it's all the shit from that happened in the movie, but it's him talking about it and being as graphic as you want because his interviewer is also like a special forces guy. He's like, "Where'd you shoot him? I shot him three times in the face." He's like, "If you saw that, if you ever seen photos of it, those are my hands holding his head together for the picture. Those are mm. those are my hands wearing the gloves." He's like, it "Blew his head apart." He's like, Oh yeah, oh yeah. Why'd you like throw him in the ocean? <laughs> oh, because <laughs> we lied about that. <laughs> because they didn't want to like have like a, a mecca for terrorists to to like visit and like put roses on Osama bin Laden's grave. Like, you, you ever go stupid. to a place where John Lennon airdrop him into an enemy's land? Now they've got a problem. Osama bin Laden thought. I mean, Barack Obama thought it was a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys' names are so Barack Osama wanted to. Yeah. Wanted to um, but, but that middle was, name's Hussein, too. That was fascinating. That's he, so he talk, funny. <laughs> about going, oh, the crazy part. Um, he, he said that the woman at the CIA told them, she's like, that his last line of defense will be his son, I think Khalid, something like that. His last line of defense is Khalid. I, I don't know what it looks like inside the house, but there will be a staircase, and Osama will be on the second floor, and Khalid will be on that staircase, and he will be armed. If you get past him, you get a shot at Osama bin Laden. And so when they get to the staircase, one of the guys yells, Khalid, come here, in Pakistani. And Khalid pokes his head out, and they blew it off. And then they walked in and killed Osama bin Laden. It Heavy was, sleeper, that guy. He was... <laughs> Osama, well, Osama was, like, up, like, trying to get... They were kind of... They always say he was trying to get a rifle. Osama was staggering around with his wife in front of him, and they shot him twice in the face, and then once more once he hit the ground. That, that's what happened. They went to kill Osama bin Laden, not to capture him. They killed him. What about um, his wife? Just let her. She go. got shot. I don't know if she died. She like mm. took a bullet in that uh, thing. I, I believe. I'm like, although I know what the 
they shoot 77 grain hollow points, he said. And my goodness, that would make a mess even if it winged you. Like if you got shot in the arm with that in a room, like you could very easily pull it out. It's a five five six, a heavy one. It's a it's a yeah, but the hollow point part that it's oh okay. It, it's gonna like kind of it's really coming apart when it hits you and making. I don't a think I've ever hole. fired a five five six hollow point. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, hunt, it, there's um the oh. there's hunting rounds is it's where we would is where we get them, but like. I don't think um, I'm like 99.9 percent sure the regular military doesn't shoot hollow points because you're not. They all shoot FMJ or, or green tip or something. But I guess the special forces guys just are, don't give a. They shoot hollow points. I've always heard they can have whatever they want. Yeah, but there's rules that although on this raid in particular, like they had snuck into Pakistan. You know where that house is was like, I don't less than a mile. I think a kilometer away from where Osama bin Laden's house is is like their West Point. Like the Pakistani um, West Point, like he's not in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. He's right down the street from their military, like professional military training grounds, like where they, where, where their top brass is. They got him in their back pocket, right there, keep, keeping him safe. I wonder if and you can look at that house on Google Maps, like satellite view, and check out the compound. Like and, a street view. There's I lots of Google car driving through there. Google cars have been there, <laughs> yeah. but. Uh, I'm sure there's imagery of, of the place. I don't know if you can like like see like updated. Like who knows what's going I kinda on. I kind of want now. to like to drag around the city and see. Yeah, like, like see the neighborhood. But, yeah, yeah. No, th those stories are wild because these guys are fucking killers. All of them. He's like, I'm not gonna tell you the 200 different stories of we went through the door, we shot the bad guys in the face. Cause we did that every fucking day. Let me tell you some stories when shit went wild. And I'm like, fucking hell yeah. Tell me what about when it went wild. <laughs> and he and, and he's got stories about having like fight bounding down the street, wounded while his partner's dead behind him. He's got a saw busting off 200 round bursts at like God. multiple assailants down the street in Iraq. Like all sorts of really crazy James Bond shit. Dude, stuff. I wish I could could tell a couple of the stories my close friend marine buddy told me mm -hmm. when he was in action over there but there are a couple of them where he was like we're all chatting and he's like because he listens shout out and he, he's like taylor this next one you cannot say on the show like you can't say this one because i don't want to implicate anything or say anything about this or that Damn. and i'll be like all right i'm a professional consummate professional you can tell me mm -hmm. and then he does and i'm like god yeah i want to tell it i want to tell it, <laughs> tell it so bad. it's such a good story people would love it but gotta gotta respect that maybe I, someday i have um the guy i did the tat with that long motorcycle rider around, around the country he was a army guy and he told stories the thing is he wasn't an elite army guy or like anything good. And all his stories are like hilariously like stupid. Like, he's like, we're walking. There's enemy f somewhere out there. We don't know where they are. We just, we know that eventually we'll get close enough to them and there'll be a problem. And uh, they're supposed to have a buddy system. I think it was him who lost his buddy. Like his buddy's gone. And now we're all like, what the fuck? Oh no, oh no. Fucking my friend is fouled up. He lo he lost the buddy that he was supposed to be accountable mm -hmm. for each other. Turns out this dude fell in like a latrine hole and now he's <laughs> covered and smells like poo. And it, but they didn't let him like stop, you know? So, <laughs> so now he and his, and his buddy gets it on him. And like, this is his story. There's no hero, like rock star shit in any of this. Yeah. Just it a, just smells bad. <laughs> just a comedy of errors in the army. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> well, weird. honestly, but, I, I'll find a link for this and like I, I'll find a good one to try to whet your appetite and get you on board with this mm, with this thing. Cause I like that. this guy I was just talking about, it was a comedy of errors for him. Like like he's like, the Iraqis knew not to fuck with the bearded guys and the AM ramps or whatever. I had some acronym for some big armor truck. And they didn't they knew not to fuck with the guys and the Bradleys. But here we were, two CIA guys. I mean, we were disguised, but we're just in a sedan. And he talks about getting ambushed. Hit they hit they shot him with an RPG. The car crashes, um, loses power because um, and and there they are. They jump out of the car. His buddy's immediately killed. And then he's running from people for so long. He's like, and, and he's been radioing the whole time for backup, telling, giving him updating positions. And then he looks down and there's a bullet in his radio. He hasn't had a radio the whole fucking time. Nobody knows Fuck. what's going on. Uh, he gets up. It sounded like some Tarkov shit. He got on top of a roof. He's like, I get to the fucking roof. And it's just a flat top roof. There's no little knee wall to get behind or anything. It's not like in the movies, but I'm returning fire from up there. And 
Then I decide, you know, I'm going to run back and I'm going to jump down to the down one floor to the landing. And then from there down to the ground. Well, that landing only existed on the front side of the building. So when I jump, I just fell two stories into the darkness onto the ground. <laughs> so there I am laying on the floor, quite stunned and a lot of pain. And here come two Hodges around the corner. And I'm like, this is great. I love it. They're, they're great stories. And and they're always so like weird about when they kill somebody. I wish they'd just be like, so then I killed the guy on the left. Then I killed the guy on the right. They're just like, they use euphemisms and they sort neutralized. of neutralize nod. It's like not even that. They won't even they'll be like uh uh they were sitting in traffic, armored Wetted car. They're in an armored car, like he said seven inches of bulletproof glass or something. Um guy pulls up next to him in a in a car. In the back passenger seat, a guy comes out with an AK, points it right at his window point blank, dumps all 30 rounds. He's like, he chews halfway through this fucking glass. And I'd like to say that I was brave. And I like reacted or said something like, let's get him. But I actually went, ah! <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what am I putting my hands up for? I'm going to stop the bullets. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, the thing was, though, they took off after he dumped his mag. But we're in heavy Baghdad traffic. He made it maybe 90 feet. And then they got to stop. And this real awkward kind of, uh-oh, kind of moment happens. Because they had one AK and one magazine. So I got out <laughs> and it's like, just, well, let's just say that was the end of them. And I'm like, no, <laughs> let's not just say that. Tell me, tell me what you did to them, bro. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm here for this. Um, so I really like those special forces guys talking about, I, you know, special forces raids. Cause we did so much crazy shit that wasn't in the news. They were talking about countries. I didn't know we did wars in, I didn't know we had a war in Yemen and Libya in the early two thousands. <laughs> we were just all over the fucking world smoking people. Apparently probably are now. Dude, yeah, yeah, it's going to take off again. Forces in Israel right now, or Ukraine. I hope. Like, I, I definitely in it. De you stay 100%. Ukraine. Like, we can't get caught, right? Like there can't be Americans there. That'll be a big deal. The I bet the Americans that are there, if they are caught, won't register as Americans to whoever caught them. Would be my guess. Yeah, I, I considered that too. Might work. I don't know. I, I I don't I don't know anything that you that you don't. Um, I guess they're right. But um, <laughs> I think you said it right. Yeah, yeah but uh, I doubt we have anybody in Israel because we're so weird about that anyway. Uh, if anything, we've probably got some like people back on like whatever the green zone is. Like, I don't know, maybe oh. there to help in some way. And I went the other way. I thought we were more likely to be in Israel because we're closer allies, I think. And what's Palestine going to do? Like, we don't want Russia to get into a hot war with America. Mm -hmm. But the the PLO... Uh, who gives a fuck if they get into a? Well, hot it's not. War it's not that? really them. We they like, don't want to lose. They don't want to lose Americans. In it, that. Israel isn't like principally concerned with Hamas as far as a competitor in the region. It's Hezbollah, and so that's why they're gonna. I, I, think it's, I, think, I think it's likely that they continue to and like do a real invasion of Lebanon at some point in the future, because that's where. Well, they, they're already bombing Lebanon because they're they, saying uh, they're taking out Hezbollah sites. And then that, you know, the Hezbollah alliance between those guys in Lebanon and in Iran, where kind of the, the meat of the power of Hezbollah comes from. I think it's going to I think it, it's a bit more risky than a, a lot of us realize over there. No, like I, I, I think I think it is. I, I one of those I CIA agree. guys, they asked him um, how will World War World War three begin? They asked him a question like that. He's, and he said that he's like, I think it already started. I think it started when Russia invaded Ukraine. That was the beginning of World War III. And we're slowly, and, you know, the, the forces are all coalescing now with the United States and Canada and Germany. And this time, very, very seemingly Poland, like, like, like really beefing up, pulling together. And mm. obviously, like, and the China, the India-Pakistan thing is always the most worrying one to me because the Pakis seem like awful people. You know, I, the, what was the, what was the, <laughs> the reason that one doesn't bother me is because it's incredibly old. India and Pakistan have hated each other for a thousand years. There's nothing new there. Yeah. You know so what the rate go of... over there and be like, you're all the same, brah. You're... <laughs> Taylor, <laughs> Taylor really... at what rate would you say the father on daughter incest uh, rate is in Pakistan compared to the rest of the world? Like by what magnitude would you say they exceed the average, you know, Wait, fa father, daughter, incest? father, daughter, incest? Yes. Occurrences. I don't know. For you to bring it up, they must be trouncing the rest of the world. So I'm going to say four times as high. Three times, as high, three times as high. Oh, I believe it's 
I think it's six thousand times. I think it's six thousand times the occurrence. Zach, um, delete regularly. this. Pretend. I'm going to guess 6,000 times. <laughs> you nailed it. See, I knew Taylor had his finger on the packy pulse. Of yeah, if there's one yeah. area where Taylor is well-educated, it's father-on-daughter rape. Mm -hmm. yes. Specifically Palestine. He's the one give, it a, uh, yeah, give it a second before you pull that number out. Just like Zachy, we please pretend please. to think about it. Uh, Zach, 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 tented Zach. fingers of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Fact check me to. on that one, Zach. Yeah, I don't know what Pakistan's up to. I don't want to throw the Pakis under the incest bus if they need. You sounded know, pretty sure. I'm like, well, you know, I I do that. <laughs> Zach says I'm looking into it. Uh, Zach's being added to a watch list as we speak. Th there's no way Twitter lied to me. It said six thousand times the occurrence. Thirty six percent of girls and twenty nine percent of boys have experienced child abuse in Pakistan. Well, are they being spanked? We need to know. We need we need Sexual to parse specifically the, the info there. No, so if you, you include you spanking, it's one hundred percent of the Pakistani children. <laughs> Reddit says you're right. Not the six thousand yeah. in particular, but that it's hugely high rates of incest. Yeah, I I saw six thousand, and which seems silly, but I I thought it's so funny that I'd repeat it. Because what are they going to do? Cousin right. marriage. I mean, that might be a barometer for incest in general. I do I know say. that like Rather that high. region, that region of the world has way higher cousin marriage than a lot of others. You can, and you would never know it by looking at them. <laughs> really? You know, I thought the whole cousin marriage thing was overblown, but I saw a YouTube video on it and say like, it's a real problem. And it, it surprised me to learn the bigger problem happened a couple generations down. Like if, mm. if a brother and sister or mother and son or whatever have a kid, those kids are probably okay. It's not until grandkids, great grandkids mm. that the problems really yeah. spike up. And that's probably compounding over time. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Right. Yeah, hopefully the middle better Pakistan. Doesn't, uh, doesn't pop off too hard. I guess it's already popping off a bit, but <clears throat> hopefully we can avoid conflict with Iran and hopefully Israel doesn't invade Lebanon and, Hopefully Saudi Arabia doesn't. I just hope it doesn't inconvenience with, with Yemen. <laughs> that is the real tragedy. We as need to make sure Kyle's all right. How much do we care if we're not in directly inconvenienced? Well, ideally, we don't want a global hegemon shift. That, but as that far as the Midwest goes, goes, yeah. But I mean, you know, day to day, like if you hear, oh, bomb bombings in what country? If what what a stand? Ah. Like I've as never lived in drafting a us. I, I'm okay. There's more than drafting. What is a real war economy like where they tell the automotive manufacturers to shift their focus to tanks? I said that funny. Or, or were they like, like just, I don't know. Hey, Kyle, don't eat steak. Save that for the soldiers. That's, the, uh, oh my God. If that, so that, uh, that <laughs> I'm that, that'll get me marching. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll be it a soldier. Of... <laughs> no, no, not that kind of marching. No, no, no. I heard it. I heard it. Impotent <laughs> protest for marching. That's what I'll do. <laughs> They like kind if, of asked the guys basically that they, they asked him like what would it look like like World War Three mm -hmm. and he his he suggested that it's going to look more like uh, these big proxy wars that are going on now rather than you know drafting a bunch of Americans and dropping them off on a beach somewhere it's going to be airlifting tanks and helicopters to uh, uh, a, a an ally in Europe or in Asia who needs it, it, it. is like, until it, just, it isn't. It is until it isn't, and you know that the idea we're totally past boots on the ground mass wars. I don't think is uh, true. I don't. Th I I think it's up to China whether that happens, and I don't think they want to do it. So I, I think we'll keep these proxy wars up. China wants their island, like like I said, which I think is going to happen this year, but they will be rebuffed as I predicted.